Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. Last-minute preparations are in full swing for Sarah's wedding. The younger of the Bloom girls, Yetta, is making final additions to her makeup as Mama Bloom speaks to her with a sigh. Yetta, why do you have to go out? Oh, I told you 40 times I have to play bridge. Hmm. Her sister's going to be married in three days, and she wastes the whole afternoon finessing. Oh, stop, Mom. I can't understand it. In our family, has never been gamblers. Must be on Papa's side. Oh, there's no gamblers on Papa's side that I know of. Oh, no. What's the matter with your Uncle Ike? He'll bet you on anything. Up to his last cent, he'll bet you. I didn't know that. Sure. He'll bet you anything he's got. He'd even bet his wife. Although if I was him and I had his wife, I'd lose her on purpose. Is she that bad? Whatever I told you about her, still the truth would be voiced. It's only your good luck she lives in Seattle. She's a borrower. Whatever you got, she wants to borrow it. See? I don't mind if people borrow something sensible, like a pound of butter or a cup of flour or even ten dollars. But your Aunt Lena, she borrows shoes, stockings, frying pans, chairs. <laughs> I think she gets up in the morning before breakfast and says to herself, where can I borrow something? No kidding. Say, last time she was here, I made Papa hide his new teeth. Oh, she wouldn't have borrowed those. Oh, no, but your Aunt Lena, there's no rules. Well, I gotta go now, Ma. Yeah, if you go now, who's going to answer this phone? Oh, maybe it won't ring. That telephone's been ringing steady since your sister got engaged. I'll bet you on a wedding like this, the telephone company makes more profit than the bride and groom. Well, you've got nothing to do in particular this afternoon, have you? Mrs. Fink is coming over with her sister from Philadelphia. Well, what's her sister doing here? How do I know? Oh, maybe she's come over to buy some new dresses, huh? With a face like that, she don't need new dresses. She should get herself a thick veil and let it go at that. I don't think I've ever seen her. Yet, if you'd seen her, you'd have remembered her. Faces like hers, you don't forget. Is she that ugly? That ugly. Hmm, uglier. Every woman's got the right to be as ugly as she wants to. But Mrs. Fink's sister takes advantage. Oh, Mrs. Fink is no beauty. Compared to her sister, Mrs. Fink is a Venus de Million. Venus de Milo, Ma. Venus de Milo. How can I remember all those foreign names? Well, what are they coming over here for? Mm, I suppose they want to look at the presents. Well, couldn't they wait till a wedding? Not Mrs. Fink. Why not Mrs. Fink? She wants to see what everybody else is sending so she can send something bigger. Well, you'll have to do the best you can because I promised to go. Oh, um, will you give me five dollars, Ma? Five dollars? Yeah, please, Ma. Couldn't you do that little chip in? Well, now, I don't want to take any chances. I might lose. Playing for five dollars is gambling. Well, it's gambling if you play for only a quarter. It ain't so much gambling. What kind of bridge you playing? Contrast? Not contrast, Mel. Contract. Mm, I thought contract when you bought a house. Well, it's the same word. Well, so long. Oh, um, oh, wait a minute. I, uh, I have to have another dollar. What for? Well, uh, I have to get a manicure. A dollar for a manicure? Sure. Uh-huh, you can't tell me that. <laughs> I had a manicure myself two years ago, and it was only 50 cents. Well, just make up your mind to get a manicure for the wedding. You don't have to tell me that yet. I'm going to get a manicure and a footicure. A what? A footicure. My feet need tending to. It's a pedicure, Mother. Whatever it is, I'm going to get one. Because if I don't, when I get new shoes, they'll kill me. Well, give me the dollar, Ma. Hurry up. I've got to go. <sighs> Here's the dollar. And don't think of anything else. And whatever you do, don't let them put that red stuff on your nails. Makes your fingers look bloody like you just killed a chicken. Well, it's a new style, Ma. Around the fingers, you'll be old style. Hurry back, darling. Goodbye. Answer that, Yetta. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Levine. No, she's here. I'll call her. 
Oh, Ma, Mrs. Levine wants to speak to you. All right, I'm coming. Goodbye, Ben. Goodbye, darling. Hello, Mrs. Levine. How's it by you? I'm glad to hear it. The same by me, I'm very happy to say. All except Jake's feet. You should see my husband's feet. He's got on his big toe a careless that's biting him something terrible. You don't say. Who? Sure, I know him. He's your cousin. Uh, you'll excuse me for a second, Mrs. Levine. The doorbell's ringing. Why, hello, Mrs. Levine. How are you, Becky? I'm fine, but there's your sister. Oh, she had to go downtown to buy a whale. A whale? Uh-huh. Uh, how's everything in Philadelphia? Let's just try down. Take off your hat, maybe. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. How's Jake? Jake's feet are terrible. How's your husband? Oh, Monroe is feeling fine. The trouble is he never gets any exercise, you see. I know, I know. He's always riding in the automobile. Yeah, terrible. I don't mean the car. A new car. I remember you told me last week it's got everything the best. Mm, I don't see how you can be so calm. If my daughter was going to be married, I would be the busiest person in the city. Not that I'd have anything to do. Our servants are so very I safe. should say they are. Say, why shouldn't they be? The money I pay them and the food I give them. You don't say so. Why, lots of families, the rich ones too, as rich as we are. When they have chicken, they get hamburger steak for the servants. In our house, when we have chicken, every one of the servants gets chicken too. You don't say every single one. Every single one. It's the same with everything else. Their clothes they don't have to pay for. Mm -hmm. Not that they couldn't afford to at the salaries I pay them, but every stitch of clothes, every stitch of uniform they wear, I give them free and for nothing. Yeah. And their rooms. Why, many a hotel hasn't got the rooms that they've got. I believe every boy that... Why, only two weeks ago, I had all of the servants' rooms we furnished with the... Oh, oh, Mrs. Levine. What's the matter, oh, Mrs. Levine? Uh, hello? Hello, Mrs. Levine. <laughs> I forgot all about you. I'm so sorry you'll excuse me, please, but I'm all mixed up. I, I was completely surrounded by Mrs. Fink's servants, and I couldn't get to the phone. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, of course, I'll remember it. No, no, I won't forget. Yeah. Goodbye, Mrs. Levine. I'll see you at the wedding. <laughs> I forgot all about Mrs. Levine. She called me up to remind me that in case Sydney and Sally need any furniture, they can get it for them wholesale. My mom and me was just talking last night how nice it is that your Sally found such a nice fella. Thank you very much. It's very excruciating of you. Yeah, she's very lucky. Most fellas want a girl with a rich father. Of course, we ain't rich like you are, but... Jake ain't exactly starving. No, I hear Jake does very well. He must be a smart fella. My husband is a smart man. That's just what Monroe and me figured out. When a small manufacturer like your husband, with practically no capital, can make a living, it's very fortunate for your Sally to find a fella that's not interested in his father-in-law's bank account. Now, with my two girls, it's different. It certainly is. But that's the way everything works out in this world, Mrs. Fink. Everything comes out even. My Sally has got what you would call a poor father, so she has to even it up with a pretty face so she can get a fella on her face. But with your girls, it's lucky with the faces they got that your Monroe's got so much money. Is that so? Sure. Wouldn't it be terrible if mine Sally, who is such a beauty, had the rich father? Then all the blessings would be on one side. Because your daughters, who've got faces like mud fences, <gasps> if they had a poor father besides, then they'd never get married. Becky, how can you say that? Mrs. Fink, I'll tell you. Rich I ain't. Smart I ain't. But I'm rich enough to be able to never ask you for anything. And I'm smart enough to know that all you come over here for is to brag. So I let you alone. You can make fun of me all day long. You can brag to me the whole night afterwards. I know you ain't got so much sense, so I feel sorry for is you. Is that so? Yeah, but Mrs. Fink, because I let you do these things to me, is no reason for you to go farther. Three things I've got in this world. My Jake and my two daughters. Maybe they ain't the best, but I think they are. Oh, you do, do you? Mrs. Well... Fink, to me those three are the best in the world. And before I would let you say one word against him, I would rather cut off mine own hand. Take mine, Jake. If he's as ugly as your sister, <gasps> as dumb as your two daughters together, and as crooked as your mother, oh. still to me, he would be the greatest man in the world. Why? Why, I've never been so insulted in all my life. It's a shame you have to go. I was just starting to have a good time. But maybe it's just a fail. Go downstairs. Get into your importable automobile. Go home to your ugly daughters. And when they ask you why you're mad, tell them Mrs. Bloom told you the truth and you didn't like it. Anna Zuspuna. Oh, Mama, what's the matter? I just passed Mrs. Fink and she wouldn't speak to me. Don't worry. Next time I see her Monroe, I won't talk to him either. But she stuck up her nose at me. Jake, that shaped nose you can't stick up. Ah, did Mrs. Fink come over for something? I don't know whether she came over for something or not, but she got it. Ah, you were arguing? Yeah, you guessed it. What were you arguing about? He was arguing about you. About me? Yeah, about you. Can't I argue about you? I argue with you all the time. But what do you want to argue about me for? I'm crazy. Sure you're crazy. All right, I'm crazy. 
Still, I can't let her be the only crazy one. Well, what did she say about me? She said you wasn't so good looking. All right, so I'm not so good looking. What's the difference? You don't care. I didn't need her to tell me I wasn't so good looking. I knew it 40 years yeah, ago. Yeah, I know you're no Apollinaris, but compared to Herman Monroe, you could win contests. Oh, so that's what you fought with her about. <laughs> She also said you was not so smart. All right, I'm dumb, I admit it. I wouldn't admit it to her. If I wouldn't be dumb, how could I marry a woman like you who argues with a woman like Mrs. Fink how smart I am? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you're talking too close to your language. And I think your language is too far away from your words. Yeah, you're not talking like Mrs. Fink. As long as I don't look like her, I'm satisfied. Oh, so you do think you're good looking, eh? Mm. Between her face and good looking is still a sleeper jump. You say someone was jumping on her face? I didn't say it, but I think it happened. <laughs> Time I think of that Mrs. Fink, I start boiling up. My fever goes up to zero. All right, Mama, why don't you quit thinking about it? She said you didn't make much money. All right, she's right. I all don't. right, all right. I'll admit you're not a United States mint julep. But you're not exactly a beggar on horseback either. Still, there was nothing to argue about. Why don't you keep calm like me? I am calm. You call what you are calm. Sure. <laughs> I'm laughing. You didn't think I was angry, did you? Of course you're angry. Jake, I'm so calm that if you don't stop talking how angry I am, I'll go crazy. All right, all right, I'll stop. I can't. Let's drop the whole suggestion. Of course. <laughs> you see, I know everything she has said, and still I keep my temper, don't I? Yeah. When a woman like Mrs. Fink talks, I know what she says means nothing, and no matter what she says, I pay no attention to her, do I? <laughs> no, you don't. I'll say that much for you, Jake. And if you would use a little judgment, you will be the same way. She also said... I don't care what she also said. It wouldn't make no difference to me. Hmm. What did she say? She said our Sally was lucky to get a fellow like Sidney. She said our Sally was lucky to get a fellow like Sidney. Void for void. Word for word, she said that. Yeah, Jake. That in all life, that in murder, that daughter of a horse thief, that, that mud face, that... Jake, that... Jake, don't lose the temper. She tells me not to lose my temper. An old witch like Mrs. Fink talks about my Sally, and she tells me not to lose my temper. I'll take my hands between her neck and that... that, that... Jake, what do you care what Mrs. Fink says? Sticks and bones will break no stone. I don't care what she says about me, about my business, about my money, but three things she can't talk about. I know, Jake. Me and your two children. Hmm, exactly. <laughs> Jake, give me a kiss. Huh? What was the reason for that, Mama? Maybe I'm crazy, but I like you. Mm -hmm.